For the Clemson Tigers, there have been 11 different starting combinations this year. That's freshman forward Chris Michael trying to emerge as an offensive force. And his prep school teammate, fellow freshman Warren Wallace, trying to shoot his way out of a slump. Carolina, a 14-game win streak forged by the play in the soft work outside and inside of forward center Sam Perkins. He and Michael Jordan combined for 63 of Carolina's 72 points Saturday against Georgia Tech. Carolina 17 and 3, but the last two have been struggled. Number one heels come into Clemson against an enemy crowd. They're in this building over the years, Bill Foster and Dean Smith have played it just about even, but the national champs are big favorites tonight. So the number one Tar Heels are on the road this evening. Proud possessors of a 14-game winning streak. They've got that record at 17 and three. And on top of the wire service polls, the new Sports Center poll comes out Thursday evening on the 7:30 Eastern edition of the Sports Center. And the same Carolina starting lineup: Jimmy Braddock, the only senior on this team, an eight-point score, joined in that backcourt by the man who makes things click. Michael Jordan had 39 points against Georgia Tech. Then up front, you've got Matt Dougherty, who. Right now is in a shooting slump of one for 15. Also big forward, Sam Perkins, nine boards a game, 16 points a game, and much more than just the numbers. And Brad Darity, the freshman, now a nine point score. And these men all play for the Dean of Coaches, Dean Smith. Clemson starting Mike Epley at the point guard. Yes, this is the man who's also the football quarterback, and he's now become an integral part of Clemson's team. Freshman. Warren Wallace in the backcourt in a five-game shooting slump of his own. Chris Michael, a freshman at the small forward position, coming off a couple of great outings. David Schaffer will be starting at big forward, averaging 14 over his last couple of games. In the center, the only man to start every game this year for Clemson, Raymond Jones. And therein lies a problem, injuries. Vince Hamilton, we know, is gone for the season. These are officials this evening. John Clarity, Dan Woolrich, and Robert Taylor. No consistency in the starting lineup at all for Clemson and the youth movement. Bill Foster says we've got a lot of good freshmen, so we're going to go and make or break our fortune with the youngsters. Well, you know, Bob, he's changed his lineup so often as we look at the matchups here tonight. I think a key matchup, if we watch a man-to-man -man by Clemson, I cannot believe that they can match up with Jordan. Jordan at 6'6 is just too big and too strong and powerful for Wallace, who's a freshman. That might be an m and -er, known in the trade as a mismatch. Raymond Jones for Clemson, jumping Perkins for the heels. Quickly, that's Jordan to the baseline and a quick whistle on the drive. Four seconds of the game as Mike Epley's calling for the foul. We'll talking to some of the Clemson players before the game. Gets down to the basic equation. They said, well, keep the ball out of Jordan's hands. Well, you know, that's easier said than done. We just watched an example of a set play off the jump of where they got Jordan free for the layup, but he was fouled. He's got one more free throw coming. He's a 69% free throw shooter. Had that great game against Tech on ESPN Saturday. You know, I was talking to some of the players, and I said, hey, just keep the ball out of Michael's hands. But that reminded me when I was coaching Bob. We used to play against the 76ers, and I would tell one of my players, keep it out of Dr. J's hands. They said, that's great, coach, but he plays up in the sky. What do we do up there? I said, pray. <laughs> Epley quickly to Warren Wallace. Tigers, and again, a reminder, the 30-second shot clock and the three-point range of 17 feet, 9 inches from the rim. Mike Epley, 15 on the shot clock. Got it around, and Matt Doherty leads the break for the number one Tar Heels, and he'll wait for his mates. Jimmy Braddock, the point guard, calls for a set play. We're 30 seconds deep. Freshman Brad Dougherty. Braddock's been really one of the keys. He settled him down in the backcourt when he took the leadership role. Sam Perkins, the hook is short. Pulled down by center Raymond Jones. It knocked out, though, and it goes right back to the heels. 
You know, Bob, the crowd really isn't into it right now as we take a look at Bill Foster like I thought they would be. I think they're sitting back and they're waiting to see whether or not Clemson can hang. If they hang, this place will be ready to explode. Well, in the matchup between the two coaches, Dean Smith has won 12 of the 15 with Bill Foster, but in this building, Bill Foster's won three of seven, so it's been easier here Little John. Three-pointer by Braddock would go. Matt Doherty fights for it. And a foul against the Tigers on the rebound against Epley. Two quick fouls on Mike Epley. Dean Smith, Bill Guthridge to his left, Eddie Fogler to his right as you watch him. Oh, Dean Smith's numbers are just unbelievable. We've set him time and time again. 16 years in a row in the NCAA, seven trips to the Final Four, NCAA title, NIT title, and winning the Olympics. Only one other guy did that, Bob, a guy by the name of Peter Newell, an outstanding coach. Perkins, we're only a minute deep in a one nothing game, a shutout being pitched, alley-oop. And Perkins is there. Just did a super job of throwing the ball over the three people on a back line. They threw it right over the baseline trio in his zone and got the lob with the great jumping ability of Perkins. And again, Carolina with that pressure on the front court and a foul called. It's tough to hear the whistles here, but Braddock's called for reaching in against Warren Wallace. Foul is actually, well, they announced Jordan the flash uh, Braddock's number up there. Let's see who might have gotten it. Oh, take a look right here. They try to put their double team pressure. There's Wallace controlling it with his left hand. He gets bumped right there, and the foul is called. Michael shot ripped down by Brad Doherty to Jim Braddock. 90 seconds in, Carolina running as you would expect them to do. They, have, of course, have to shoot inside with 30 seconds. Perkins. Braddock over a big pick set by Matt Doherty. Nice pick by Doherty and a nicer shot by Braddock. Well, he gets out of a little slump he's been in. He was 0-4 against Georgia Tech. In fact, he was teasing me. He says, Coach, take it easy on me. I just can't find the ring. He found it there. Great pointer for Braddock. Raymond Jones still a hoop. Laying it in to get the Tigers on the board at 6-2. to two, two minutes in. And Jones is their leading scorer. And he came in and gave them a good basket there. They needed that one. Foul away from the ball. Foul is against Ray Jones. Call for his first. Three quick fouls on Clemson. Clemson 7 and 13. We mentioned at the top one only a couple of games in January. Currently on a two game losing streak. Had losing streaks of three and five. It's been a struggle this year. Since Vince Hamilton broke his shooting hand, his arm in Alaska. There's a zone on the out of bounds. They're in a 1 3 1 zone. Now it flattens to a 2 3. Braddock from Perkins and misfires, and it's ripped down by Warren Wallace. Tigers running. They trail by four. And a foul on Braddock. Clemson has the ball. They're down by four early in this game. Epley to Chris Michael, the freshman. This is a freshman dominated team, and one of them just hits right there. The young man from North Carolina, Chris Michael. Michael's a good wing jump shooter. 6'5", he's got good range. Braddock, three-pointer. Jordan, over Wallace. Michael Jordan, three points for Michael. Well, the nation might be watching the best player in America. I'm at, I happen to be prejudiced, Bob. You know what I think of Michael Jordan. I think he's the greatest in America. I hear it five him. times a day. Warren Wallace. Well, Wallace gets out of his slump. He's been 14 for 40, and they need that kind of productivity from Wallace on the wing. Brad Doherty posting. Matt Doherty, Jordan baseline. Foul on the shot. Jones called quickly for another foul. Uh, Carolina does an excellent job of attacking here. They throw the ball over the top of the zone, get the good 45 degree angle for the entry into Jordan, and they could do nothing there but follow him and let him earn him on a free throw line. Sophomore Raymond Jones, two fouls and four quick ones on Clemson. We're gonna see a great deal of free throw shooting. Jordan's back on the line with three points. Watch Carolina if he converts these free throws, jump into an immediate full court pressure. young man who has 52 steals this year, far and away the team leader, which shows you the type of defense he plays, tells you about the type of hand speed and foot speed he has. He's not yet 20 years of age. Turns 20 on February 17. He's two for four early from the free throw line, and UNC is up 9-6. Bob Lee, Dick Vitale from Little John Coliseum. 
Clemson, South Carolina. Tigers in white. Schaffer to Jones coming down the lane and the basket counts and a foul after the shot. Nice pass, interior passing by David Schaffer. Here's David Schaffer with the good look right down the lane. There's the great cut by Jones, makes the layup. After he releases it, he bangs. Good call by the official right on the play. And it was the third foul on Raymond Jones, so Murray Jarman is reported on. So Jones takes a seat. He's got four points, but three fouls. And on comes one of the best leapers you'll see. That's Murray Jarman out of Delray Beach, Florida, who one time this year knocked himself out by hitting his head on the rim. Well, I was teasing Murray Jarman. I said, there's one guy that doesn't have the white man's disease. I mean, he can run and jump and fly up in the sky with the best of them. 44-inch vertical jump. Doherty gets a good pass and a basket. Matt Doherty gets his first basket of the game. Just a superb backdoor cut by Matt Doherty, and he needed that layup, Bob. The last time he took the floor, he was 0 for 8. He's on a 1 for 15 slump coming into the game. Chris Michael, number 3, is bottled up. Van Schaffer, Murray Jarman, watched by Brad Doherty. Nearly stolen by Jordan. Epley to the corner to Schaffer. And the freshman's got a rebound. They're only getting one shot. One in there. Good man-to-man -man offense against Carolina. Jordan, as Warren Wallace got a piece of the ball, he got a piece of Michael Jordan as well. And Jordan, who has been on the foul line a great deal early in the game, fouled by Wallace, one on Wallace, six on the team. They're going down inside to Jordan. Wallace is playing behind him, and anytime you allow Jordan to post you up real strong on the low boxes, you're really at his mercy. Here comes Warren Martin in, Bob. What an improvement in that young man. Yeah, he really has been coming on. He's given him some minutes off the bench where he can rest some of his people. Jordan. Three points from the line tonight and uh, jump shot. 58% from the floor this year. Leads the ACC in shooting just a touch under 20 points a game. Right behind him is a real gutty performer for Georgia Tech by the name of Mark Price. And number three is a guy from out of Virginia. Did you ever hear of him? Ralph Sampson. I think I've heard a little bit about him, and he'll be playing this North Carolina team next Thursday. We've got that game on ESPN, but right now, Clemson down by five. Nominate George Raveling as one of the early candidates for Coach of the Year honors. He's done an absolute fantastic job with Washington State, Bob, but he had a tremendous loss when he lost Guy Williams, leading scorer and rebounder. Should be tough for Washington State against the Bruins. On the whole, it's been a down year for the Pac-10. The ACC, though, it's been its usual jungle in the Big East. And, of course, we speak volumes about the SEC. This game's a five-point affair. Carolina up 13-8. to eight. That's Mike Epley, a three-pointer. Well, they need that kind of offense out of Epley. He's got to look at the basket a little bit more. Last time I was here, he just thinks pass and not shot. Well, the junior has his first hoop, makes it a two-point affair. We've got 15 and change. Jimmy Braddock watched by Epley, Matt Doherty. Jordan for Warren Martin. And a traveling violation. It was a toss-up, either a travel or a 19-second violation as Warren just couldn't get out of the lane. Well, we had a look at Bill Forster helping to officiate. There's Jordan at the last minute as help defense comes over. Martin is kind of surprised. He said, Michael, I know you're leading the ACC in scoring. I can't believe you're thinking of passing it. Well, he's got 37 assists, Jordan does, looking for another one right there. This is Epley outside to Murray Jarman, Warren Martin all over him. Schaffer. Oh, you know he loves scoring that basket. There's a lot of North Carolina tradition in the Schaffer family. His dad was an All-American on the Frank McGuire, one of the super coaches of all time, and Dean Smith was an assistant at that time when Lee Schaffer played at Carolina. Well, sports in the Schaffer family go hand in hand. We're tied, 13 apiece on ESPN. Perkins over Jarman. I was ready to say, where have you been, Sam? And Sam just all of a sudden slid down low, demonstrated that little left-handed jump hook got the easy basket. Perkins has got four points. Carolina two-point lead. Mark Campbell in the game now, number 20, cross court. Schaffer, three-pointer. Jordan rebound. Outlet is deflected, but Martin's got it out to Braddock now. Good look for Perkins. And over Jordan, or rather Jarman, it goes as Perkins puts it up for a sixth point. Well, Perkins plays like he's about seven feet, he's 6'9", but he has that long, long reach. I'd like to measure his arm span. He's got that 747 wingspan. Michael gives it off in the corner. Schaffer again over Martin. Kept up and in by Jarman, who got way up into the heavens to put it home. 
Well, Murray Jarman demonstrates the great legs we talked about. Eastern Basketball did a feature on him about his great jumping ability. 44-inch vertical jump. That is flying in the sky. 17-15. The heels up by two. They're on the road. Jordan posting, but we've got a whistle before the shot and a foul as Steve Hale comes on for North Carolina. Both teams make substitutions. That's Anthony Jenkins, a freshman from Spartanburg, South Carolina, just down the road. While you watch number 42, Jenkins, who just came in the game, he's an outstanding long-range shooter. In fact, he's right up there near the top in three-point shooting for Clemson. Bill Foster, great numbers at Clemson, still a 62% average when you figure those numbers out. A lot better than those numbers. He's one of the real class guys in the coaching profession. I know you, Steve Stedman, our producer, and myself really enjoyed sharing the afternoon with Bill today. And he's just a real class guy. This is one and one for Jordan. It'll get a bonus shot. Well, last year, to show you the eminence to which his program has risen here at Clemson, at 14 and 13, Clemson got an NIT bid. Well, you know, who didn't get a bid last year? That's true. That's a problem with me. When I coached, you see, they didn't have all those tournament bids. And 17 and nines, and as we watched Perkins inside, I stayed home, had to go watch baseball practice. Eight points for Perkins. Let's not talk about bids. Dick Versace could be watching. Who's he? Is he a coach? I hear tell. Rejected right back to Epley. Anthony Jenkins, Steve Hale with a rebound. Carolina by five. Hale, Matt Doherty, two-pointer. Well, he looks like he's got his rhythm now, Bob. You start to build up your confidence. He made that layup early as we look at Doherty. He was one for 15 coming into this basketball game. And now it's a seven-point margin for the number one team in the country as Schaffer has it blocked out of bounds by Warren Martin. Hey, Warren looked at Sam Perkins. He said, big fella, I can get up there and block some, so block some shots too. Look at Warren Martin, 54, comes over from the help side. He uses his left hand, great body control there. He just has to build his body up in terms of, as we look at Michael Jordan and Bill Guthrie. That was Bynum's shot that he put out of bounds and a foul against Carolina. I was teasing Martin as we look at Bill Foster. Show him how to block out, Bill. Come on now. There's Clinton Bryant on his left, sitting there very quietly. And there's the man, Dean Smith. Dean said to me, said, please, Dick, don't tell the world how much I've won because I don't need everybody getting on my case. Jenkins outside the Campbell. And Mark Campbell has his first basket. Here's a man who was five for six from three point line against Duke and Epley with a steal back to Campbell. Two quick ones by Campbell and suddenly we've got a game again at 22-19. Well, give credit to Epley there. He showed his great athletic ability. Remember, he's a very unique performer, number 10. Starts from two sports, the starting quarterback on a nationally rated Clemson Tiger. John Brownlee, number 32, is in for Carolina. Doherty to Buzz Peterson, who is on. We've got 12 minutes to go in the first half on ESPN. Tipped away, Hale recovers. Eight on the shot clock. Six on the shot clock. Hale with three on the shot clock. They haven't gotten it away, and it's tipped away by Jenkins. Well, very aggressive team defense there, Bob. Bynum over Doherty. Jarman fighting with the tall trees. Oh, look at Jarman. He says, can I sky? There's the kid from Delray Be Beach, Florida, demonstrating his great jumping ability. Now Clemson will let a point, but a foul is called on Clark Bynum as he went for the steal, and quick as a lick, Perkins and Jordan are back in. Jarman takes a seat, and when McCants comes on, Matt Doherty will have a seat as well. One point game. Well, we saw a graphic illustration of what Epley can do and what Jarman can do. But you got to remember Jordan and Perkins were getting a blow on the bench. Well, you got to know this, Bob, that really Carolina faces teams consistently that play at 110% maximum. The intensity and the emotion. People really get sky high playing against the Carolina Blue. John Brownlee, man from Fort Worth, will have a bonus shot. John's a sophomore out of Southwest High School in Fort Worth. That's his first free throw of the year that he's made. Got number, another member of that front court that gives Dean so many ways to go. 23-21 is our 24-21 is the count as an official timeout is taken. 11 minutes and 46 seconds left in Little John Coliseum. Our heels up by three points. The Tigers hanging tough. 
Clemson has yet to go to the free throw line, and Carolina's had plenty of opportunities, and now Carolina's got basically the starting five back in there. They've got Hale in there as well as Peterson, but Jordan and Perkins are back into the game. Well, you know, Carolina leads the ACC in field goal percentage, and that's a real trademark of a Dean Smith basketball team. They really execute. They execute all the options of their offense, and they really go down into the low boxes, which is really high percentage shooting area. Full court pressure by the heels. That's David Schaffer, number 34, with Mark Campbell giving him help in the backcourt. Jenkins in the front court, watched by Gardy. Schaffer to Campbell with 17 on the shot clock. Jenkins way off. Peterson's got a two on two of he hustles. Carolina with the ball, they're up by three. Perkins, three pointer. Sam Perkins is actually number two in the ACC in three point percentage this year. He's really used it to his advantage. Well, he's shooting now 10 for 17 from that range. And that's amazing when you think that he's an inside player. Jenkins gives it back over the pick. That's Campbell's shot pulled down by Perkins. Carolina by six with 11 minutes exactly. Clemson, Peterson, Brad Doherty, Steve Hale wide open. Three-pointer. Oh, it's a pass. They're such an unselfish basketball team. They're really a coach's dream as we look at Bill Forster. He has such a positive attitude, especially when you think of his club as 7 and 13, struggling. Yet he believes here today, he said, hey, as we look at the bench right now, so we have a shot here. He said, we have played Carolina tough here before. We have beaten some teams here that were number one in the past, like Duke back in 1977. My kids will be ready. Campbell, his team down by six, tipped out by the Tigers. Last year, Virginia came in here with the number one ranking and a buzzer shot by Craig Robinson, his only basket of the game, defeated Clemson. January 9th, 1980, Duke came in here number one and fell victim to the Clemson Tigers. That 79-80 season, a great one for Clemson. Jordan baseline up and over Michael, and it drops. There's the execution again of the backdoor cut. Jordan comes up, you deny him the basketball. Defensive player doesn't see ball and man. He goes back door, layup, no help. He's got nine points. Jarman is fouled by Doherty. Brad Doherty. Here comes Jarman down low. There's the good pass by Campbell. He throws the bounce pass down on the boxes. He uses his legs, God-given jumping ability. Jarman goes up, lays it on the glass. He was great to talk to in practice yesterday. You and I had a great rap session with Jarman, and he was telling us about the fact that Braddock comes back in for Steve Hale, that he went to the Bronx in New York because that was the only school for them, Tom Penders, that recruited him. And then he said he went up here north, he said he got into the big city, and he said, hey, I gotta go down south. I'm a warm weather climate man. Jarman has another one coming. Well, it was discovered not actually by the coaching staff, but by the players of Fordham who were lounging out at the beach Fort Lauderdale one day. And there was Murray shooting some hoops. And they recruited him. He wasn't only shooting hoops. He told us he was also checking out some bikinis laying there on a beach. Can you blame him? <laughs> you said that, not me. Now I didn't say that. 29, 23. Ten minutes to go. Don't get in trouble, Richard. Perkins. Oh, that soft sophomore move of his, that south ball move of his, that now has him five points in the last two minutes. Epley's shot. Offensive basket interference, no basket. Chris Michael was at the rim. Ball was going through anyway. You well, judge Freddie Barricata of the league office in charge of the officials will be mighty proud of the call here by one of his people. That ball is on the cylinder. Watch the hand interfere with the basketball. Once it's above that cylinder, that is a no-no. Oh, scratch the basket back to 31-23. Perkins has got 13 out officially. Jordan has got nine points at this juncture of the game. Matt Doherty. Martin trying to post. Braddock for Jordan, who's been posting all night. And Rainbow is tipped in by Warren Martin. Well, that's going to help your shooting percentage. Bill Foster wants to get a little motion on offense. Carolina jumps into the zone right now. And this is Chris Michael to Mark Campbell to Schaffer. You've got to be able to shoot the wing jump shot. And Clemson's been struggling all year with this jumper right here. Two-pointer doesn't drop. Matt Doherty bails it out. Bob, you know, really, the story of Clemson, when you have one guy averaging double figures at 11, Ray Jones, that tells you about your offense. That's Warren Martin. Back to Perkins. Got a piece of it, and Jordan out of bounds. 
Michael Jordan has been a working baseline all night at 6-6 and really overmatched against who's ever guarding him. He certainly can do that. To take a look at him trying to jam it back down inside. Perkins goes up and slips out of his hand. But that's the territory they like to get the basketball right in the paint area. Carolina by 10 with 8.43 in first half. Schaffer's three-point attempt. Braddock's got it. Carolina trying to open a big lead. Their last two outings, they've had to struggle. They've had 14 consecutive victories. Doherty, three-pointer. Dan Schaffer rebound. Hudson's only getting one shot at the basket. Chris Michael. He's got four points, 33-25. Nice transition basketball. They really ran the ball up the floor quick to Michael and took it to the goal. Well, nobody guarded Jordan, so he takes the home run shot, and he's got now 12 points. Well, you come back down and get two. He comes back right up, and he sticks it in there. 36-25 the count. Campbell spins from Doherty. He's open. Jarman's tip falls, and a foul on the tip. Curry Jarman. Got seven points off the bench so far. Well, Carolina's not doing a good job blocking out. They're allowing Jarman to get the lane. He stepped right into the lane. Nobody sealed him off, and he had the good tip as we look at Doherty. We took a look at it right here. There's the jumper by Campbell, 15 feet. There's Jarman. There's a no-no. Nobody's on inside position. No one blocking him out. He tips it, and up it goes, and he scores it. Jarman's got... Three field goals for Bill Foster's team. They've all come from board where a couple of tips, a rebound shot, and he's on the line again for another free throw. He's one for two there tonight. Well, you know, Bill Foster has really been a builder of programs with the what he did at North Carolina Charlotte in the days of Cedric Maxwell. And then he was replaced by Lee Rose, who did a great job and is doing a great job now at South Florida. Raymond Jones comes on for Clemson with less than eight minutes now remaining in the first half. Jarman has been a one-man battalion off the backboards for the Tigers of Clemson, trailed by eight points. Game high score right now is Sam Perkins, who has hit six of seven from the floor the last six in a row. He's got 13 points. He's got a quiet 13, you yeah. know, Bob? He really has not given you that spectacular slam dunk, which is a trademark of Sam's, but he's got a quiet 13. And I've said it on top of the show, Bob, and I don't know your feelings, but I just think they're the best combo in America. I don't think any team in the nation could put a combination on like Jordan and Perkins. Be hard-pressed to even think up one. He's got a three-pointer tonight. He's, as we said, number two in the conference. Jordan's been working down deep all evening. Peterson for Brad Dougherty. Ten on the shot clock. Peterson's three-pointer. Martin with a rebound, and as he brings it down, he's fouled. 2-3 zone. I believe they called on an Epley. I'm not certain, though. It might have been on Jones. It was Raymond Jones, and unofficially, and officially now, that is his fourth foul. So Foster says, I put him back in. He's in there 20 seconds. He gets number four. What am I going to do? So he goes to Jarman, and he reports to the scores table. There's Mr. Murray. Well, that really hurts because he's their leading scorer, leading rebounder. He's got some experience to have Jones on the sideline against this front line of Carolina. Could be really, really devastating. Jones rejected by Martin. Bynum can't get it. Tipped by Peterson to Braddock, working on Epley. Martin again brings it down and is fouled again. And Martin's called for the push out as Jones takes a seat and Jarman's come back on and watch the offensive foul this time. Well, here comes Braddock with a little shake and bake move, tries to slide in body control. Warren Martin gives a little push on Michael, and the official was right there. John Clowardy does a great job. I had him against uh, Louisville and uh, Duke. He was working the game, and he's just an outstanding official. I mean, Louisville and North Carolina State. That was a great game early in the season before, of course, Derek Wittenberg went down for state. Saw Perkins and Jordan report back on. Less and seven and a half in this first half. Carolina up by eight. No one scored a little bit right here. Well, Carolina's in a two-three zone now. They, There's Jarman. Well, they Martin pulls it down. Right there, Bob, but it was not called. It was close. It was one of those debatable ones. I'll give the benefit to the official. Jordan hit by Jarman, and he will have a three-point opportunity. We talked about Jordan working off the baseline. He did it again that time, and Jarman fouled him. That's just great athletic ability. You can't teach that. There's the pass by Martin. He hangs in the air. Jarman comes over with a great leaping ability. Gets his arm. 
And we take a look right here. The ball entered down low. Watch the block. Oh, well. That was close. I really don't know if he interfered there. I'm going to back away and take the fifth. I'm going to be a politician. <laughs> That's a first. Jordan's got 15 points unofficially. 39-28 again. Carolina turns the screws defensively. Campbell quickly to Chris Michael. And they break the press and a foul on the rebound. That's a perfect pass against that pressure. They go into a double team, and Clemson looks right over the top. The diagonal pass. Here comes the trap. They get it to the wing, and this is the pass you want. You want to throw it diagonal. Campbell does. They got the open shot here by Michael. Here comes Darty. He's over the top, gets a piece of his arm, and Michael goes to the foul line. Cecil Exum has replaced Matt Darty. There's Cecil. This young man at the free throw line, when he was in high school, he along with Vince Hamilton, the outstanding shooter who broke his wrist early in the year for Clemson. They played together at RS Central High School, Bob, and they won a state title. It was 32 and zip. Well, he missed a couple of free throws right there. He did have the winning shot for his fit against Georgia Tech. Well, it wasn't the shot he made Bobby Kremitz lose a lot of sleep with his great block in the last 40 seconds. I know Bobby Kremitz, the Georgia Tech coach, could not sleep over that play. Braddock, again for Jordan, who's double teamed. Bynum's into the game. Out of bounds. Jordan's just taking it down low all evening long. Well, there's Braddock. He's looking down inside to Jordan. They just throw a little flip. I'm surprised Virginia doesn't do a little bit more of that with Sampson. Throw that high lob to him and let him go to work up there in the cylinder up in the aircraft lane. Well, there's the alley-oop to Sam Perkins, the same way that Sampson did it all afternoon long last Saturday against Louisville. Well, a great play by Perkins. Yes, yeah, Sampson had a great game against Louisville. Showed all the kind of talent that I said he had in terms of being the best player ever in college basketball. Murray Jarman, who has been the sum total of the Clemson offense, Makes it 41 to 30, keeping me, his team close. He told me he was all fired up. He said, the nation's going to see me today, coach. And there's Perkins, who has hit seven consecutive free throws. He's got 15 because he's got a three-pointer. Seven field goals, I should say. Foul called away from the ball. And I watched that lob pass right there to Perkins as we look at Dean Smith. And Billy Packer and I, you were there at dinner tonight. We were talking. It's amazing that you don't see more of that in the Virginia situation with Sampson, that the guards do not look to throw him that high lob. I'm not trying to tell Terry Holland how to coach because it's obvious he's a better coach than I am. That's why I'm sitting next to you. That foul was called on Michael Jordan. He's got two. And on the line with a one and one, it's Mike Epley. He'll take the ball from Dan Woolridge, the official. Epley is a 69% free throw man. Well, this young man right here, Epley, is what college athletics is all about, Bob. A 4.0 student in high school. And for the people out there, 4.0 is equivalent to a straight A average. And now in college, he has a 3.25 in addition to playing quarterback on a nation's top 10 team. He's got five points this evening. Warren Martin in a 41-32 game travels with the basketball. And as we mentioned last game, the thing about Epley is that he's got one more year of eligibility remaining in football than he does in basketball. He redshirted one football season. So as far as basketball is concerned for Mike Epley, consider him a junior. That's our tally, 41-32, five and a half in the first half. Bob Lee, take my towel, and Clemson. Well, there's the little run and jump defense. What I'm talking about when I say run and jump, the wing players, Carolina's defensive scheme, when the ball is dribbled and invited to the wing, they will leave and jump right at the basketball and try to double it up. Schaffer throws it to his coach, but unfortunately, Foster's not in the scorebook. Foster, last four years, his teams have gone to postseason play. Won't be happening this year. Took over a program that was on probation. In fact, his second season here, Clemson was 22-6, and six, but they could not go anywhere. They shook up a few folks during the course of that season. They're zoning, sitting in that zone right now. Look for Carolina to get into the gut of the zone. Braddock, 15 on the shot clock. Carolina patiently exploring the perimeter. Michael Jordan with 10 on the shot clock. Carolina trailing up by nine. Up by nine with five on the shot clock. Jordan pull down. Anthony Jenkins with the rebound. Mike Epley. That's Wallace, or rather Warren Wallace from the wing. Wallace played at Fort Union Military Academy last year. And you know, Bob, they have one of the great high school players in the nation here, Chris Washburn, and he's only a junior, six foot 11. 
Well, Wallace just committed a foul, his second of the evening. Went to East Mecklenburg High School in Charlotte, but then prep last year at Fork Union along with Chris Michael. They say right now that Washburn and a young man by the name of Danny Manning, who I caught with my own eyes as we look at Steve Hale there, six foot ten from out of Greensboro on Page High School, are the two best big people possibly in America in the junior class. I'll tell you, the talent gets better and better, but you can talk about all the talent you want in the world. Give me MJ and I'd still be coaching Michael Jordan. He's got 16 points going for 17. You talked about talent getting better. Lute Olsen uh, in Iowa getting a commitment from a junior. Just gets... The scouting, the camps, it all just points towards a better decade for college basketball if the perspectives are kept correctly. 42-34 and 43-34 as now Jordan's got 17 points. Jordan's a product of the North Carolina school system and uh, the high school basketball programs there and the basketball in North Carolina is just superb on a high school level. Won't go from the side, Jordan's got it. Matt Doherty, offensive foul, a good play by Mike Epley, planted himself, and Doherty is charged with a second foul. We take a look right here, there's the pass, going up the court. They're going to get in their transition game, there's Doherty. Defensive player is planted, had to step to make the turn. The defensive player has to allow that offensive player a step in that situation, such as a blind move. He allowed him that step, he made contact, and the official was right there. Jenkins in the corner. Jarman playing the post. There's Murray Jarman. I'm surprised the way they're getting the ball inside against the Carolina 2-3 zone. Carolina not shutting off the passing lanes in the zone. Jarman finding the gap in the seam is inside for the layup. Jarman's playing the game of his life right now. He's a four-point scorer. Had a career-high 14 against Duke on Saturday, but he's got 12 already. Whistle before the shot. A one-and-one -one call you might hear from the baseline. Dean Smith with a query or two about that foul. Well, I tell you, he silenced some of the critics as we look at Jarman right there. When they went out of the gate three and three, the question that was America's, hey, what happened? What happened to the Tar Heels? And as I told you on our college basketball report show, Bob, three factors prevailed as we look at Bill Force to sit down. Three things. As long as Dean Smith was there, Michael Jordan was there, and this man, Sam Perkins, was there, you knew they would be back. His first trip to the free throw line tonight. No bonus coming. That was a one and one. And let's see who's got a jump ball. Which way is the arrows pointing at Clemson? That's the easy way out. And the arrows pointing right at the Tigers. They lost the tap to start the game. So 43-36 Carolina lead. Foster's team has the ball. An official timeout is taken. Three minutes and 37 seconds of the first half. Well, I always really believe that this is one of the most important times on the floor. Will they allow them to get away? Carolina up 43-36. More from Clemson after this. Discussion at the scores table. Go now. Okay, now we're on. We're on now. Okay, we got it. Are you sure? Huh? We'll see when we turn around. Dean Smith yelled, "Are you sure?" We turn on. We don't get away. If it doesn't blow away. I think the discussion is about how much time is left. 3:37 on the clock. That was John Clowardy right there in the sideline, and as I told you earlier, he's definitely reported to be one of the best officials in the ACC, and I second it. I really believe he does a solid job. You'll see him next week. We've got live coverage of the rematch between Virginia and North Carolina next Thursday. John will be there. You'll be there as well in Charlottesville. Rather, I should say Chapel Hill. Looking forward to it. That place will be rocking. Jenkins from the side. He can shoot the basketball, Jenkins. Anthony Jenkins, first two. He's 11 for 22 from three-point range. He's also out of a military academy, Frederick Military Academy in Virginia. Five-point affair. Hale has it tapped away by Epley. Oh, is he a competitor? He'll never quit. That kid is a winner, Mike Epley. You see the brace on his knee. Three-point game, 43-40. Epley's got seven points. Hale's running the Carolina team, number 25. Brad Doherty to Hale. Perkins posting it. Jarman is all over Perkins, but there's not been a call. Doherty, 13 on the shot clock. Perkins. Little John Coliseum builds a near capacity. That's been a rarity this year, but comes in at 7 and 13. Five on the shot clock. Doherty with three on the shot clock. Good defense. Good team defense. They shut off all the passing lanes. They really did a great job with denial down there on the boxes, and they really, really shut them down. Great defensive concept there.
Schaffer posting. Epley. Great box out by Doherty. Well, the Tigers had a shot at it with two minutes for his pass. Throw it right away. Schaffer on the floor tied up, but this time the arrow's pointing at the Tar Heels. So it'll be Carolina basketball. Schaffer, a good scrapper. Well, here comes Doherty handling the basketball. 6-7, stops the foul line like you're supposed to. But there's the good defensive block by David Schaffer from behind. Here he comes, 34, gets all ball. And I know his papa, Lee Schaffer, the former North Carolina All-American, is going to be mighty proud, just as Bill Foster is. Clemson has taken a timeout with two minutes and eight seconds remaining in this first half. And Carolina leading at 43 to 40. Carolina, Dick, is led by as many as 11 points. And Clemson, we saw them yesterday in practice. We said, you know, for a 7 and 13 team, they're high spirited. Some of the veterans, guys like Bynum, who used to be a starter, Fred Gillum, whom we have yet to see, who have a lot of PT in the past playing time, are not playing now. And Bill Foster has gone with youth. But this evening, they've come in and hung in there and closed an 11 point deficit back down to three. Well, they're really hustling on the floor. As we take a look, you hear as Carolina tries to reverse the basketball. Great anticipation, athletic ability. Here goes Epley, goes to the goal, real strong, lays it over the rim, finger roll, has the layup. Note on Mike Epley, five assists, seven points, and a couple of steals so far tonight. C selects him into the game to Brad Doherty. And Brad Dougherty. Well, you know, credit that to excellent, excellent pass. They're so unselfish, Bob. They really give up the basketball to one another. Less than two minutes in the first half. Carolina by five. They are the number one team in the country. It'll soon be consensus, I would imagine, when the Sports Center poll is out Thursday, 7.30 Eastern time on the Sports Center. Mark Campbell, number 20, back into the game. Epley running the club from the point. Jenkins is on the left wing. Carolina in that zone. Seven on the shot clock. Campbell with five on the shot clock. Three-pointer is short. Perkins has got it. Peterson. No traveling violation. That was forced by Epley. Good defense by Epley and the turnover for Dean Smith's team. Well, Dean's unhappy with their play right now. They got out of the rhythm. They got the early lead in double figures. And they got a little sloppy on the floor and they've allowed Clemson to get back in the game. It's a five-point game with less than 90 seconds in the first half. From Clemson, South Carolina, Little John Coliseum. That's Jenkins the bomber. Perkins cleans it off. I tell you, he wipes that glass. That's the Windex man. He just sweeps the glass. He owns it. Steve Hale calls for a set play. And that shot clock is 30 seconds in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Really quickest in the country. They can play off of Hale right now because he's really not shooting the basketball well at all this year, Bob. Exum number 50. Perkins with seven on the shot clock. Peterson tapped away and stolen again. This is Campbell running the club across the time stripe with 45 seconds. Epley, three-pointer. Tapped by Jarman, Jenkins, short. Jenkins again, blocked by Brad Dougherty and a foul. You see the time on the first half, less than 40 seconds. Clemson, to their credit, team that is 7 and 13, hanging tough with the number one team. We look at Epley's jump shot from the wing. He shoots the 18-footer. There's the inside position. There's the first block right there by Perkins. Jenkins goes up the second time, and he gets banged right across the arm. Foul was on Cecil Exum as Jim Braddock comes back on, and to the free throw line goes Anthony Jenkins. You know, I was mentioning Hale before. Hale does a good job of handling the basketball. He hustles, plays some good defense. He is a freshman. He's got a lot of basketball in his future ahead of him. But he really is not your jump shooter like Braddock. In fact, he's shooting 44% and only 42% on the free throw line. Jenkins is the best free throw man on the Clemson side. One of two there. Brad Doherty pulls it down. Four-point game. Shot clock still a factor. 34, as you see the time of the first half, with now 20 in the shot clock. Doherty, Buzz Peterson, Watch 17 him. on the shot clock. Watch him get it into Perkins. Down low. They're trying. Peterson, 10 on the shot clock. 19, as you see in the first half. Whistle away from the ball. No shot. The foul is called. Clark Bynum charged. Rather, David Sheffer charged with a foul. Now that's Bynum into the game. The young man who has been a starter the last couple of seasons. Well, Bynum's an interesting story. He was one of the heaviest recruited players in America. In fact, his high school coach, Jerry Faulkner, is now on the staff here at Clemson, and they say he came very close to becoming a Kentucky Wildcat. We go back to Kentucky next week. Dick, we'll see Kentucky-Mississippi State in that 
Dog Eat Dog Bizarro SEC Southeastern Conference. Warren Martin is on his team is uh, playing chess here in the waning seconds of the first half. Perkins is on the bench. Brad Dougherty. You mentioned the SEC. I'll tell you something. When you got Georgia and Mississippi leading the league at six and three, you better start considering a guy like Huey Durham as we look at Sam Perkins there next to Bill Guthridge on his Perkins left to your right is the assistant. Hugh Durham, possibly coach of the year. It's early, of course, but Georgia, without Wilkins, is leading the SEC. 47-41, 15 seconds, first half. Brad Dowdy's got four points. There's the zone right now. Going to give you that wing jump shot. Three-point attempt with eight seconds and a half. Peterson, you see the time. Braddock, missing. Brad Dowdy overshots. Tapped by Martin. Goes Count it. the catch Count it. the buzzer. Count it. Warren Martin. Warren Martin's tap at the buzzer. That was the second half of the first half. 49-41, Carolina on top. Well, here's an example right now. We're just hustling on the glass. The clock is running down right now. Martin gets his big hand up there. It doesn't hurt to be six foot 11, but that basket was good. It definitely beat the clock. Now the number one North Carolina Tar Heels, winners of 14 consecutive games. Yes, have a lead at halftime. 49-41 over the Clemson Tigers, but it has not been easy. John Coliseum is rocking. We've got the second half and the halftime stats after this. The defending national champions and the number one current team in the country, North Carolina, leading Clemson by eight points at halftime at 49-41. Bob Lee and Dick Vitale back at Little John Arena, Clemson, South Carolina. Where, as you take a look at what the ACC has meant this year for Carolina, it has meant a goose egg in the loss column with uh, two other teams with one loss. Well, you know, it's going to be a real war when Carolina and Virginia hook up next week. I'm really looking forward to that classic. And that should mean the ACC title, no question. Free throw shoot, a field goal shooting, Carolina 58%. But if you take out their three-point attempts, they're shooting 14 of 19. They've taken 10 three-point attempts, so you do a little quick arithmetic. They have shot a torrid pace. Clemson, they've been in a slump. They've had only one game recently over 50%. Now they're only shooting 41%. Well, interesting statistic right there, Robert, Number. as I get it out. Number. 13 turnovers for Carolina and only four for Clemson to allow Clemson to remain in the contest. That's very unusual, but the great stat for North Carolina shooting 58%. Well, Jordan He's got 17 points. He's been to the line a number of times. You see Perkins with 15. And really, it's almost a replay of the scoring battle against Georgia Tech. Everyone else just kind of the supporting cast. Clemson, very Jarman, one more point. He'll equal his career high, leading the way with 13. Epley with seven points and, more importantly, four assists. And the Tigers have the ball to begin this second half. ACC coverage on ESPN. Tigers in white. They're running right now, Bob. They're flex offense. Carolina jumps into a double team to get them out of their rhythm. This is Epley. Jarman, new career high for Murray Jarman. He's got 15 points. Well, that's what happens when you leave people open. But again, it's been so effective for Carolina in providing some scoring power in their transition game. 49-43, Carolina. Might have that winning streak, might be number one, but it has not come easy, especially over the last week. Perkins over Jarman, sky hook. Gordon can't get it. It's pulled down by Warren Wallace, the freshman. And now Whitley, the point guard. Six point deficit for the hometown Tigers. Only seven wins this year. They're in the basement of the ACC, but right now, Carolina playing at their level. Schaffer has it taken away, though. And Doherty gives it to Braddock. Leg block on Epley. It'll be a Carolina basketball. You know, I mentioned before the flex offense, and people are probably saying, what do you mean? In simple terms, what they're trying to do offensively, and I'm talking Clemson, they don't have a great post player, so they play an offense that gives them a lot of what we call screen downs, up screens, looking for the wing jump shot, and looking for what we call a little shuffle cut off the baseline for inside action. Right now, we are about a minute deep into the second half of Carolina, leading it by six. Matt Doherty to Michael Jordan. 1-3-1 one, one zone right now. They have a guy roaming the baseline. Wallace, the athlete. Green pointer by Braddock. A lot of blue shirts around the rebound, but it's pulled out finally by Schaffer. Epley on the break. His team down by six. Warren Wallace, guy. 
Well, that's what I meant by athletic ability. He caught that ball 18 feet from the basket, one dribble to the floor, extended his body, and just exploded up on the glass and laid it down. Wallace has got six points. We're back to a four-point game. Brad Doherty playing catch with Perkins, who's now playing outside with Doherty. Brad Doherty playing down low. And Clemson is changing defenses on a score or on a miss. They're now in a man-to-man -man defense. Perkins, Jarman on he. And Perkins, it's the seat of his pants as he puts in now a 17th point. Chris Michael comes back. Chris Michael's got six points, 51-47. Well, they did a great job of running the ball up the floor after the made field goal. That's part of their fast break offense. Not are playing man-to-man -man defense. Jarman's playing head-to-head -head on Perkins. Brad Doherty batted out of his hands on the baseline. Either Epley or Schaffer. Call for the foul. Two and a half minutes into the second half. And once again, Doherty throws it down to Doherty. They spell their name differently. They pronounce, pronounce it the same. And there's the foul. There's Bill Foster. He likes this kind of basketball. Like he said, you know, these kind of games, you're playing the number one team in America. All the pressure's on them. This is a fun game for my kids. Was not a fun foul. He had a few words there. I'd like to get into his stomach and find out if it's fun. Well, I bet you he's got to use a lot of meal locks now. Oh, right at Perkins. That shot might have gone in right off the pass, but Perkins jammed it home to make sure about it. Well, Bill Foster wanted basket interference. Again, it's one of those calls that the naked eye has to see immediately and make it. I thought it was basket interference. So did I. I've been wrong before. Warren Wallace to Schaffer, but a pushing foul against Braddock. You know, if I didn't know better, I'd say that was the payback. Well, you don't think officials do those things, do you? Now, look right here. If the ball is above the rim, that's on the cylinder. And if he plays with it on that cylinder, you wave it off. Two fouls on Braddock. Too close to call. I am politician number two. <laughs> Braddock, six assists. There's Perkins shooting nine of 11. Some numbers from Carolina. Three minutes into the second half, Wallace to Epley looks at the three-pointer, takes a two-pointer. Mike Epley's got nine points, 53-49 the score. Well, Carolina leading. He's looking for the basket a little bit more offensively, and I believe that's a real good, good move on his part. Jordan posting, double team. Brad Dougherty wide open, but he did not want to think about that shot. Jordan posting has it taken away by Epley, who is called for his fourth personal foul. And that is a big break for Carolina if they can get Epley out of there. Well, there's the pass thrown over the top, down inside to Michael Jordan. There's Epley reaching down. Inevitably, when you get that hand across the offensive player's arm, the whistle's going to blow. They get the foul before he attempts the shot. Foul was on Michael before the reach in by Epley, so a break really for Clemson. 1 3 1 zone. Oh, yes. Play. Braddock to Perkins. Sir Sam with a slam. He's had three of those this evening, 55-49. That's our tally in Clemson. Epley watched by Jordan. Warren Wallace, two-pointer. He's got eight points this evening, 55-51. Clemson right with Carolina, step for step in the second half. Braddock thinking about three points around Epley. Chad Perkins, Brad Dougherty. They're going to get Dougherty for a push-off. As he pulled it down, the foul call. Non-shooting foul against South Carolina. No, it's and Brad Darty's called for his third personal foul. Well, Darty definitely gave a little push off as he signals, I believe, is that his fourth foul? That's third, his third. third. I tell you, it's hard to hear each other at court level. Little John coming to life. Clemson Tigers down by four. 16 zone. minutes to play. Schaffer's three-pointer. Brad Dougherty's got it. Michael Jordan back to Braddock. They're going to go down in the boxes on Perkins, and they're holding him down there. Jarman's definitely hooking him. And Jarman's called for his third personal foul. Foul is on number 25. You know, we use the term a lot doing our color commentary on the boxes. And for the fans, what we're really talking about, down in the lane area, there are two boxes on the floor. And if you get on those boxes, you really got great inside position. Well, Carolina's had that inside position. They own a four-point lead, 15-47 in this game.
Carolina 19 to 8 in the second half. Carolina led by eight at halftime. Here's that goaltending call, Nick. Boy, watch Warren Wallace operate. He lays the ball, and there's the interference on the shot. Definitely Perkins interfered with the basketball above the cylinder on his downward flight. That is basket interference if it's right above the cylinder. Jim Braddock, number 24 for Carolina. 11 and a half minutes in the game. He's watched by Campbell. That's Buzz Peterson, number 22, watched by Wallace. Perkins for Jordan. Reverse Jarman to Campbell. Clemson has the lead of three in the basketball. Schaffer. Campbell's capable of hitting that jump shot from deep. You gotta watch number 20, he can shoot that basketball. Freshman Warren Wallace. Pulled down by Buzz Peterson. Notice how they keep getting that jump shot from about 17 feet at the foul line, right at what we call the elbow. That's part of their offense. The dump for Perkins, blocked from behind by Schaffer, and a foul called after the initial block on Anthony Jenkins. But a good block by Schaffer got a shot uh, at Perkins from behind. You know, Jenkins looked at the official and he said, hey, I got all ball. And we take a look at Perkins right here. Ball's deflected, there comes Jordan right over. Jenkins believes he has all ball. There's another angle. There's the entry down in a box to Perkins. There's the ball, definitely a good block. And there is, I don't know about that one right there. You know, I guess when, you, when you're an All-American, I guess they looked at Jordan and they said, hey, that's MJ, we put him on a foul line. Michael Jordan had 17 at the half. He has yet to score. And now has just scored his first point of this, the second half. Well, you know, when they got in trouble, they started to decide right now, during that timeout, we better go down inside to Mr. Jordan. He completes the one and one. So Clemson leads it still 60 to 59. And again, Carolina with a little bit of pressure on the backcourt. They'll pick it up at half court. Watch Doherty leave his man and try to double up. There it is. There's the double up. There's the rotation. Mark Campbell, number 20, feeds it off. Jenkins to the hoop. Ripped down by Jordan. And a rebounding foul against Clemson. That really hurts as a coach. And Bill Forster has his jacket off now. Really hurts because you work on executing. And here's perfect execution against the trap. There's the good pass. Jenkins goes up. There's the intimidator, though, back there, Sam Perkins. And then there's the foul right after the missed shot. Second quick foul on Anthony Jenkins. And so well, Foster down to the shirt sleeves this evening. Let's get the tie off, Bill. Take the tie off, then the top button. Get right into the act. Michael Jordan's got 19 points tonight. At 39 in his last outing. He'll have a bonus shot as he hits 20, yeah. averaging 19-7 this year. Well, it hasn't been easy sitting in that number one seat. It seems everybody who gets named number one, it's boom, bam, out of here. Well, St. John's might have been thinking about it a little bit. Pitt upset them the other evening. Well, you know, playing at that Pitt field house is really tough. You talk about coach of the year candidates, Luke Hunter Center certainly won. A lot of great jobs being done all around. How about the job Bill Foster's done here this evening with his Clemson Tiger team? A tie game, 60 apiece. Dan Schaffer, David Schaffer with the ball. Big possession right here. They have the three-point lead. They've got to maintain. Jarman went baseline and was pushed by Perkins as he made his move along the paint. They've got to maintain or sustain that lead. As we watch a Jarman right now, Carolina invites, invites that baseline, but they don't rotate anyone over, and Perkins bumps him. Three fouls on Sam Perkins, and again, a one and one. Both teams are at the limit. They started to inbound it, but the score clock shows both teams in a bonus, and I believe now they will indeed let Anthony Jenkins, the freshman, shoot a couple of free throws. If you're going to spring the upset, Jarman, I should say. If you're going to spring the upset when you're the underdog, Bob, you've got to convert your layups, and you've got to make your free throws. Carolina is one of the best free throw shooting teams in America, and this basketball team has struggled on the line. Well, Murray Jarman's a 64% man, which is average for a major college. But he's got 16 points, career high effort for him this evening at a St. Matthews High in Delray Beach, Florida. Clemson shooting 66% as a team this year on the free throw line, and Carolina's over the 70 mark. Jarman's got 17, his team's got a two-point lead. 62-60, Bob Lee, Dick Vitale on ESPN from Clemson, South Carolina. Maybe an upset in the making. Leg block on Campbell, it'll be North Carolina ball. 10 minutes and six seconds. Clemson stays in a man-to-man -man look right now for Carolina. Dump either down low, right to Perkins on Jarman or into 
Jordan inside on Wallace. Clemson takes its second time out of the game, so with Clemson leading at 62-60, teams will talk it over. Clemson's got that 7-13 mark, but they've closed it. They were down by eight points at the half. Those are the teams this evening. Clemson in North Carolina, Carolina. They've had a tough time against Wake. They had a tough time against Georgia Tech when they go home after this one. They'll say we had a tough but a very tough time in Clemson. Well, there's no such thing anymore on a major college level as just stepping in anybody's arena and getting out with a victory. You have to be prepared. You have to have poise down the stretch. It's going to be interesting to see if the young kids from Clemson can have enough of poise to hang tough at winning time. Warren Wallace with the steal and the jab. Oh, I tell you, he's got blazing speed with the basketball. He just made a great steal, super anticipation, and just blew the length of the court and went over the rim and slammed it home. Warren Wallace is 15 points. Clemson's got a four-point lead. We're under 10 minutes. Jordan, Michael Jordan's got 22 points now. Well, Wallace was dreaming about that slam dunk, going home, watching it on TV and a replay, and Jordan ran back door for a layup. No foul. Campbell behind Jarman, saved by Jenkins as it hit the official. Campbell again. This is where the 30-second clock really favors the better, talented team. Jenkins, Campbell against Perkins on a mismatch. Seven on the shot clock. Jarman! I mean, they're playing a picture-perfect game. Jarman cannot do any wrong. Smile, Bill Foster, smile. Your kids are making you proud here tonight. 66-62, no longer, no matter how long Murray Jarman plays college ball or plays ball period, he'll remember this night. Warren Martin, number 54. Sam Perkins, watched by Jarman. Martin doesn't get the rib. Jenkins to Schaffer to Campbell. Martin's really getting himself in poor position offensively. When he turns to shoot, he's got a bad angle every time he goes to score. Behind Jarman again, again saved by Jenkins. Jarman not hearing for that pass. Second time they've misfired on that one. Out of bounds off Clemson, a misfire there on the exchange of the ball. Heels have it back, eight and a half in the game. Brad Doherty has reported on, and Martin takes the seat. That's one of the trapping areas of the floor. They took the ball into the coffin corner, allowed himself to be trapped. And I believe he stepped out of bounds. I don't think he called a foul, Bob. There was no foul, no. It was just a, a mishandling of the ball. Carolina shooting four of 14 from the floor in this half. They trail by four. Freshman Brad Doherty to Jordan. Matt Doherty and Jimmy Brown have got to get a little bit more offense. They just cannot rely on Perkins and Jordan. Well, there is Sam Perkins, watched by Jarman. What a sweet move. And I'll tell you, Jarman stepped right into him, what we call a reverse pivot to block him out, and made great body contact as he still controlled the ball and put it down. Perkins has got 23 points. Clemson up still by two. Schaffer, Jarman baseline. Perkins lost it off his fingertips. I mean, Perkins is saying, where did this guy Jarman come from? I've never heard of this cat. Where is he from? Murray's making a name for himself tonight. Warren Wallace, three-pointer. He's got 17 points. You smell what I smell, Robert? I begin to think it just might be the upset of the number one team. 69, 64, seven and a half, pushing Pal away from the ball in the key. A lot of time, 7.38, but I'll tell you something. If you're Dean Smith right now, you're getting a little concerned. You're away from home. That three-point play, if a guy gets hot on the opposition and hits two or three of those, it could be a long, long night. Foul was on Jarman. That was his fourth foul. He sits to a standing ovation. He deserves it. He's played a superb game here today. That's five. The unofficial count was incorrect. The official count is five. Murray Jarman has fouled out. What a loss. They can applaud, but they will miss him in the last 7.38 of this game. He leaves with 19 points. Well, he has nothing left. They got a tremendous game. He's playing with tremendous adrenaline, emotion. He told us yesterday when he was talking to us, I'm ready to play against the Tar Heels. Look at him right there. Smile, Murray. All you young ladies are looking from Delray, Florida. Smile. Sam Perkins, 24 points. Jenkins corrals the rebound. 69-65. Clemson by four. Carolina. Totally unexpected turn of events. Carolina's starting to put a little more pressure on the basketball. Ray Jones outside. Warren Wallace with Jordan on him. At least three-pointer won't go. 
Raddick on the break. Seven minutes in the game. He's fouled by Epley as he made his move. Raddick's got really good quickness. I'll tell you, a lot of people questioned whether he had the kind of speed of Jimmy Black. Well, right now, watch his speed as he explodes up the floor. Cuts off the defensive player. They're two fine athletes going at it right here. Epley, number 10, bumps him. Raddick goes to the foul line. Four Excellent. fouls on Epley, Dick. He's an excellent free throw shooter, shooting 80% from the free throw line. He's two for two tonight, Jim Braddock. He'll have a bonus shot. Attended Baylor prep in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Really, we mentioned it earlier on our telecast. Dean Smith will tell you that the turning point for Jim Braddock and the entire Carolina team this year was their game with Tennessee Chattanooga. Since then, they've ripped off 14 straight games. Well, you know, also by the fact that they went to that big lineup by getting Brad Doherty on the floor, giving him a 6'11 role player and then swinging Jordan to the backcourt. 69-67, Clemson leading it by two. We go under seven minutes on ESPN, the number one team in the country, and a struggle for that ranking right now. It's loose, Jones can't control it, does so, block. Epley, no one can control it. Last touch by Carolina. Wild scramble in the key. I don't know what your stats show. As we take a look right here, they try to get the ball into the gut of the defense. Very active inside. There's the block right there to the left hand, Perkins. I don't know what your stats show, but Matt Darty's got to get more in the offensive flow. Jenkins from the side. Anthony Jenkins now with five points. 71-67, Clemson leading it. Six and a half of the game. The shot clock goes off at the four minute mark. Good baseline jump shot by Jenkins. Braddock watched by Epley. Man to man defense. Brad Dougherty. They're going to swing the ball over to Jordan. They're going to swing it right to Jordan on a box. There it is. Over Wallace. I'll tell you, after you do five consecutive Carolina games, you get to know their offense. Look at Dean. Is he animated? Dean knows he's got a war. Look at the big fella. 24 points for Jordan, 71-69. Dean's team down by two right now. Clemson hoping for the upset. Mike Epley. David Schaffer exchanging. Wallace. Nice head fake by Wallace. He had Jordan out in the third row of the stands. Rebounding foul though on Jenkins. Jenkins called for his third. 5.53 on the clock. That's Bill Foster. Carolina just never loses their poise. They have that feeling they've been there before. They know what pressure's all about. They've been in pressure cookers, and they just hang tough. Talk about hanging tough. Sam Perkins, and who knows pressure very well. He's got 24 points this evening, but he's only one of three from the line tonight. And that's an interesting stat because Sam is shooting 83.9% from the free throw line. Big rebound comes back to Braddock, 71-70. Well, Perkins has got 25 points. Braddock. Now Carolina's going to fall into their zone. Once they take the lead, they put the pressure on the other offensive club. And there they are. Jump, I know I, I got a scouting report on Carolina. Well, Terry they have better call me up. 72-71. Wallace and Shepard dunked in. Let's see who they give it to. Looked like maybe Shepard was at the rim. Raymond Jones with Jones his great jumping ability was right there to slam that hole. So Jones with six points. Tigers up 73-72. Brad Dougherty. And he brought it to Perkins. Schaffer, big rebound. There were two Tigers there and no heels for that rebound. Well, what they're doing defensively, Bob, they're playing off of Brad Doherty and letting whoever Doherty is, whoever's guarding Doherty rotate to double up on Perkins. 16 on the shot clock, which goes off in another minute. Jenkins. Rebound, Matt Doherty leaves it for Braddock. Well, Jenkins is not bashful. He'll shoot that ball. Jordan tried to sky, really mistimed his jump. Wallace on the break. Epley, three-point Clemson lead. Excellent transition basketball, two on one. Stay a little wider than the lane, and Epley delivers the left-hand layup. Perkins with a layup for his 27th point, 75-74, though. Tigers are up by one. Well, if the book The shot clock is off. Well, if the book follows itself, they claim, and I claim, 
Winning time is where the great player makes the great play. Carolina has two All-Americans. The shot clock is off, but Jenkins is shooting nonetheless, fighting for his rebound and committing a rebounding foul, his fourth of the game. I'll tell you, Bob, he's not bashful. He reminds me of you. I'll tell you, he wants to shoot it every time he touches it. We tried to get a basketball today to shoot around on this floor. Couldn't do it. It's a hot floor tonight. It's got a whale of a game being played across its length and breadth. 75-74, Dean Smith, Bill Guthridge, the brain trust of the Tar Heels. Chairman of the board, Dean Smith. When you talk about the great coaches in America, as we take a look at Bill Forster, you got to put Dean right up there with that other guy down in Indiana, Bobby Knight. And I'll let you decide who's one and two. No comment, not right now. Perkins is two of five tonight from the line. And he ties the game at 75. He's got 28 points. You know, when I was talking about winning time, in the last four minutes, the important factors are two. One, free throw shoot, shooting ability. And number two, having that one great player to make the great play. Well, there's Just a great like play there. by Jordan, but he misses twice for the rebound. And pulled away by Bynum, saved by another great player. Perkins pulls it away. We're at the four-minute mark. The shot clock is dead. The game is tied 75. The onus is on Clemson in a tie game to pursue the play. You know, special players want the ball when the going's tough. A lot of situations, kids could play great for 36 minutes, and then they say, hey, coach, don't put the ball in my hands. There's Perkins. He wants it. Clemson, a two-point deficit. That's why, he's, the lead. that's why he's a double-A, an All-American. Well, a timeout taken by Clemson is Perkins. It's 30 points, 3 minutes, 38 seconds to go. Carolina leading this game against Bill Foster's Clemson Tigers. 77-75 is the score. At halftime, Carolina was up by 8. They are fighting for that ranking now on ESPN. Sam Perkins unofficially has 30 points, but you were making the point, Dick, when he was on the free throw line about great players making great plays in great pressure situations. Missed the free throw. Here it is, that last sequence. Well, he misses the free throw right here. Jordan keeps it alive. He's active on a glass. The ball is blocked, deflected. Jordan goes after it again. Ball rolls to the corner, and there he is, number 41. Sam Perkins alertly comes up with it. Carolina goes and scores and takes the lead. Unofficially, Clemson's got two times out remaining. Carolina's got the lead, the number one team, the defending national champs, leading it by two. It has not been easy. Never has it been easy. An 11-point lead in the first half, a 9-point, 8-point halftime lead for Carolina. And now Clemson looking to tie. Mike Epley, Warren Wallace. They're going to try to overload the zone, swing it to the baseline. That's Chris Michael, number three, playing the near corner. No shot clock. It has been dormant. Three-point line still very much the factor, though, and it's the shortest distance in the nation in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Epley and Shaffer playing right at that three-point line. Well, Perkins is trying to shut off the wing with his long reach, playing in the wing of the zone on the baseline. There he is, trying to take that jump shot away. Jones trying to flash, but Martin's not giving him a chance. Martin is back on at center for Carolina. Wallace in the corner. Epley. A lot of patience right now being demonstrated by Clemson. They know this possession could be big. Could mean the game right here, Bob. Well, with 2.40 of the game, the Tigers trail by two. Michaels in the corner, Epley's on the point. Schaffer's helping him out. Because if they don't score here, don't be surprised if Carolina goes to their famed delay game. Jones was double teamed, but Carolina pressuring defensively, but I'm very impressed with the patience of a Clemson Tiger team, which is 7-13. and 13. Well, that's intelligent basketball right now. Number just, one team in the country is down by, up, I should say, by two points. They just ran a vertical screen down inside for Schaffer. Here's Dean. We approach the two-minute mark. Carolina rotates out of the zone into a man-to-man. -man. Schaffer's with the ball. That's Wallace, number 11, watched by Jordan. Chris Michael. Michael Jordan rebound. Watch him open up the whole floor right now and go into a 2-1-2 set and run some time down on the clock. Well, when a Carolina coach or player holds up four digits, it means only one thing, and here it is, the four corners. Doherty. Well, They're looking for a hoop, but not actively. I'll tell you, Bob, when they ran that against my club, when they came over to Detroit and I played their great team with Phil Ford, Walter Davis, they ran that. I put the white handkerchief up, and I said, I surrender. It is over. 
Timeout taken by Carolina. 92 seconds remaining in this game. Coach Dean Smith plotting the strategy with his team number one in the country, leading by two points on the road. Bob Lee, Dick Vitale, and Little John Coliseum in Clemson, South Carolina, where 77-75 is the count. 92 seconds remaining. The number one team in the country, Carolina's got the ball, and when last we left this drama of the hardwood, they were setting up a four corners. Well, as opposed to in the past with that three-point play, and here's Dean right now. They have two delay games. They have a four corners they run where they spread the floor, and they use what we call dribble penetration, and then they have a four corners attack which they call it a different term. I don't know the exact terminology. 4C. They run a four-man four attack where they use the postman as a release man, and they'd like to run up and down screens on the wings. Well, let's see when and if Clemson gives a foul quickly. Reason it's called four corners, they spread and occupy all parts of the floor, looking for that quick dump down into Jordan or Perkins for the slam dunk on a penetration. And they've got the ball handling team in. Jordan is in, Braddock, Peterson, and Doherty, along with Perkins. Well, also, you know, the ball's in the hands of Braddock a lot, and he's an ex excellent shooter, free throw shooter, as is Peterson. One minute in the game. It's the call. Foul, Campbell. They were devastating when Phil Ford used to get that ball, and then it put guys on a baseline like Kupchak and also Tommy Lagarde, and here's Bill Forster calling his people over for some last-minute instructions. I think, personally, against this, what he's telling them, we got to double-team the ball, trap the ball, and get it out of their hands to get them out of their flow out of that set. Well, there's a minute and two seconds left for Clemson to do something about it, but now with Raddick going to the line, his team up by two. Brad Doherty is back on defensively. Obvious move there by Dean. Well, King Robert, I'll tell you something, partner. It's a lot easier making suggestions here than it is on that sideline coaching. He's four for four, Jim Braddock, tonight. And five for five. He's got eight points, a three-point field goal in the first half. This free throw right here is big. And she's a little concerned right there. And Carolina takes a timeout to talk about how big that free throw is because with that three-point field goal, if Braddock makes it, would put his team up by four. A minute and two seconds remaining. Carolina with that 17 and three record, a 14 game winning streak right now, looking good maybe to go to 15 consecutive wins. The number one team in the country. Good job, Robert. Good job. 62 seconds left in this game. Bob Lee, Dick Vitale. Clemson, South Carolina, where football, yes, does rain, but this evening, the Clemson Tigers giving basketball fans up country in South Carolina something to cheer about. But right now, Carolina, North Carolina, leading it by three. Braddock's got another free throw coming when we resume play. Well, there's Dean right now. He's coaching right down to the last second. You know, you mentioned this is football country, but Bill Foster will debate that with you with all the success they had here in basketball. They had the Tree Rollins era, and then they had Larry Nance, who's really doing a great job with Johnny McLeod, who is one of the better coaches in the NBA, and the Phoenix Suns. But they got a young man, I understand, visiting here. I didn't meet him, Willie McDuffie, who people think will be Mr. Basketball in Car South Carolina. And it's between, I understand, Georgia, South Carolina, and Clemson. Braddock's got nine points, 79-75. Carolina by four points. We go under a minute. Look for Campbell to look for that three-point play. Jones feed for Chris Michael, and he lays it in for his eighth point. 79-75 timeout taken quickly by Clemson. They will press the inbounds pass with 50 seconds to go. You talk about people coming in for this man next year, Bill Foster, who has made a commitment to the youth movement, which is why we have not seen a fellow like a Fred Gillum this evening or Clark Bynum has seen spot duty. He's got Mark McSwain of St. Pius High School in Atlanta, a 6'5 man already verbally committed. They're looking for him to come in next year. But the recruiting for North Carolina really is not as open as maybe some other schools. They're recruiting some folks. They're hoping to supplement, complement what will be an excellent returning crew next year. Well, you know, number one, that they're going to always get a blue chipper. Uh, North Carolina has such great basketball tradition. The fans out there, absolutely. The beat goes on. They love their basketball. They're knowledgeable fans. I mean, I just love it when I go to Chapel Hill because the people just eat, sleep, and drink basketball. And I know people say, Dick, stop singing the praises of Dean Smith. And I say to all those people that say that, just check out the numbers, and the numbers do not lie. You know, Sampson was devastating against Louisville. He had the McRae brothers talking to himself. He played up in another world and played like the old, old world performer that I've said time and time again, the best center ever, including Jabbar and Walton. 
But this year, Bob, there have been nights where he has not played with that kind of emotion and intensity. And that's why I say my choice for player of the year is Michael Jordan. He's on the floor right now. His team with 47 seconds in the game and 46. A foul given in the backcourt. Doherty will go to the line as Schaffer came over and committed the foul. Well, now it gets down to converting foul shots. If you're going to make your foul shots, you go out a winner. If you miss these, you can be in big trouble. Brad Doherty comes back on. There's Brad. It's a one and one not an intentional foul. Those will be crucial calls. Epley, Campbell, and your screen there is Coach Bill Foster. 46 seconds. Well, this Matt young, Doherty. This young man with about eight seconds left in the game. Pounced on a loose ball after a blocked shot by Doherty and a heartbreaking loss for Wake Forest. He really was impressive when I had that game against North Carolina. And Doherty went the length of the court, was fouled by Alvis Rogers, and then went to the foul line and made both foul shots with three seconds left. He's only got five points this evening, Matt Doherty. This is his first trip to the line. The bonus end. Makes it an 81-77 lead. He's got six points, Matt Doherty. Well, they're all cheering now in East Meadow, Long Island. Every time Matt makes one, his fam family's a big viewer of ESPN. Schaffer, three-point attempt. Braddock fouled by Chris Michael. A good foul on the backcourt with 34 on the clock. Third foul on Michael. He's getting a little helpless right now, even though there's 34 seconds, and they'll probably get another possession for their three-point play. But if he puts these two in, the march to number one continues as Carolina reigns as the number one team in America. Anthony Jenkins back on for his offensive prowess. You know, you mentioned Coach of the Years earlier. Don't forget a guy down in Nevada, Las Vegas, Jerry Tarkanian with Sidney Green. I mean, when you go unbeaten and play it, I know Don DeVoe told me, he said, Dick, we played them and they blew us out at, ten, uh, at Vegas. He said, but I was impressed with that club. That was Tennessee's first loss. Braddock, who is six for six and seven for seven from the line tonight. I just believe Carolina is number one, but there's going to be a school, and Dean knows it. As Eddie Fogler's on his left, coming down here next Thursday, going to try to settle the score. And I'll guarantee you one thing: Virginia is not going to drop behind by 21 before they decide to start the play. 11 for Braddock. That game is live next Thursday. Virginia, North Carolina, the rematch live on ESPN. 83-77. You see the regulation time. Jenkins three-pointer. Perkins, Braddock, three on one. Alley oop off the hoop there and trying to get it to Jordan. That's a bad play with 19 seconds in a close game. Yeah, you don't want that. That's showtime. Campbell, home run won't go. The rebound blocked and a foul on Perkins with 12 in the game. And the Tigers down by five. Well, they could have iced it completely, even though it's like lights out right now as we watch Campbell with the jump shot. There's Perkins coming over on the baseline. Michael gets possession, challenges the big guy. The big guy bangs it, and the referee looking right at him. Danny, I believe Woolrich made that call, and he's looking right at him. He says, I got you, Perkins. I got you. His fourth foul, but with 12 seconds on the clock, it is possible but not probable that Dean Smith seemed to lose this game. With Chris Michael on the line, he is 0 for 2 there this evening. You mentioned recruiting. Dean's right now in the hunt for the young man from out of Archbishop Malloy in New York, Kenny Smith, who last night when I was on that Art Rush show on ABC, I told everybody there, I believe Kenny Smith is heading for North Carolina. And they're also after David Popson. But my story tells me Popson will be possibly a member of the Fighting Irish with Digger Phelps and Notre Dame. Nine points for Michael, 78 for the Tigers, 83 for Carolina. Warren Wallace comes back on. Foul called. Well, the battle for number one continues. Carolina leading the AP and the UPI. Sports Center poll comes out Thursday evening. Carolina struggling here this evening. We'll have to see how the ballots are phoned in Thursday morning because UNLV remains undefeated at last report. St. John's took a loss. Virginia was very impressive. Memphis State made good on the only loss of the season, blowing out Virginia Tech earlier this week. I just don't believe St. John's when you're talking about being in the top five in America, and I think Louis Parnaseco would agree with me. Without the great inside play, they're getting productive basketball as we look at Bill Foster, and he did a master job of planning for tonight's game and took the Tar Heels right to the buzzer, right to the wire. But I just don't believe that they have enough in the middle from kids like Wennington and Allen to be able to compete with the Indianas, Carolinas, and so forth. And I know they beat Carolina early. Three-pointer by Jenkins at the buzzer. Makes your final score 84-81.
this is a different you, Carolina can... team, though, Bob, than what St. John's beat earlier in the year. Indeed, Carolina has progressed, but Clemson losing its 14th game. They dropped to 7 and 14. They had Carolina, the number one team, the defending national champions, on the ropes, but Carolina winning for the 15th straight time, the final 84 81. Well, Perkins down the stretch made the big play, and free throw shooting was the difference. Thanks to our producer, Steve Stebbin, our statistical help, Jerry Rothermel. Again, the final score, Carolina in a tough one on the road in Clemson over the Tigers, 84-81. Bob Lee Batch, with us, College Basketball 83.